Hi, I've just come out to the doctors after seeing the GP that I saw last time, the um, mad but lovely locum. Um, and all I can say is, the man's a legend. He was he was just amazing. You know, I um, gave him the book. I'd, you know, put stickers in the you know the different areas that I really wanted him to have a little look at. Um, didn't really think for one minute that he'd he'd look at it. You know, there are people too. They got lives to lead. Um, and when I got there, I was just so nervous. I also thought maybe I'd have annoyed him because I was late, missed the appointment, but managed to get in to see him anyway because there was a, um, uh, what do you call it, you know, like when somebody drops out. And so I got to see him. And the, but the patient before me must have been um, a bit of a tricky one because people were like buzzing in and out of there with him and he, he just looked dead flustered. Um, so I went in, I'd practised and practised what I thought I would say to him when he, you know, if he was negative. Um, and the first thing he said to me was, thank you very much for the book. He sort of found it really interesting. And I was like, you read it? And he said, yeah. He said, I read it. He said, uh, he said I didn't read all of it. He said, but I read the parts that you um, labelled. And he said, and whilst reading, I googled and researched, um, he said, and I'd just like to say thanks, he said, you've taught me a few things that I didn't know. He said, also, he said, I hadn't realised um, that it was, um, oh, what's the word, you know, like, a bit like quality control. Um, sorry, I can't remember the proper word, but, um, so he hadn't realised it was as regulated um, to the extent it is. Um, in America, you know, he's still wary of like um, of getting like a dodgy batch from like maybe unreputable places. But um, he was just amazing. He was just amazing. Um, he talked about a few things from the book, and he he was just he was just really supportive. Um, he just he finished talking to me about the bits that he'd read, and he just said. So, he said, um, we need to proceed from here, he said, and the choice is yours. He said, it's your body. He said, um, you're the patient. He said, and you need to make the choice. He said, it's not down to me. He said, um, and, we talked to, uh, and at that point I broke down and started crying. And then he was like, are, are you okay? And I said, yeah. And he, and he was like, what's upset you? And I said, just the fact that you've listened. And I said, um, I just can't believe it. And I was saying to him that I just feel so lucky. Like, um, do you know, just, just, I said, you just don't know what this means. I said, just the fact, I said, you could say now, but your choice is levothyroxine or nothing. I said, um, it wasn't, you know, I said, just the fact that you're saying it's my body, we need to listen to you. He was saying that, um, yeah, they've, you know, as a doctor, they have training, they've got years of experience experience he said but we get it wrong he said we get it wrong for a lot of reasons and he said and he said because we're only human and um and things move on and we don't always keep abreast of everything that's out there things um things change and something he said just he said just look he said um you know he said i was a doctor during a time when um somebody he trained under used to prescribe cigarettes smoking um, he said these were different times. He said, and now we know. He said that smoking's terrible for you. He said, but then we didn't. He said things change, and he said we've got to keep an open mind. And he said I can't stand in your way. He said it might not be something that I would initially um, um, prescribe, but if you want an alternative way of doing things, then that is your choice as the patient. And um, I have uh, an obligation to. Sorry. Um, to um, monitor you and make sure everything's going okay. I was just like, it just seems so, so unfair that I get to see you and there's like hundreds of thousands of people all around the world who don't get to see somebody who will even speak to them like a person, let alone explain things to them and let alone support them in their decision. And he was just quite like taken aback. He just looked a bit weird, and I and I, I was saying to him, I can tell. I said, "This you you perplexed." I said, "This is obviously like a normal day for you. This isn't a normal day for me, and this isn't a normal day for the majority of people who have thyroid 
disease. I said, it's just not. I said, you are not. He said, but this should be normal. I said, but it's not normal. I said, you are not the norm. You're not the norm. I said, do you teach? And he went, no. And I said, well, you should. I said, you need to teach. But then it was really funny because there was a little insight because he kept calling the TSH, um, F, S, H, I think. And then just absentmindedly, because he went FSH and I said, excuse me, the air, um, helicopter, and gone. Um, and I looked at him and I said, the FSH? I said, oh, don't tell me that's something else I have to look up. And he went, did I just say FSH? And I said, yeah. And he said, no, I, said, I don't mean that. He said, of course. He said, that would have been a funny walk. And I was like, hmm? And he said, when I was training to be a doctor, he said, the, the man he, um, one of the men he trained with on the wards, if they weren't allowed to use abbreviations, um, only the ones that the man training them couldn't say himself, if they did or if they said a, a word wrong, um, he made them do a funny walk up and down the ward. If, they, if he got something wrong, he also had to do a funny walk up and down the board. And he said that man was a legend. He said he was absolutely unbelievable. He was so inspiring. And I, I just thought to myself, so that's where you get it from then. Because you've obviously taken on board, um, you know, your mentor's ways. And I think he should pass them on as well. Um, it just made me feel really awful. And for those of you out there struggling and who have not got the support of your doctor or a healthcare professional because it is scary, scary, scary to do this alone. Absolutely terrifying to do this alone. Um, just bumbling through and never sure if you're doing it right or doing it wrong. And I just wish, and I said to him, I wish you could see everybody. I wish you could see everybody. And I know he's like not a complete believe but I kind of actually like that that he's staying impartial I think that's healthy but I just wish it wasn't just me and I hope to God those of you who are watching this and who haven't got the support of a doctor I really really truly hope that you get it soon I really do I mean the spanning in the works could be I haven't actually told them that I've moved yet because I know that I won't be able to stay at that surgery Um, I've got I've redirected the mail for um, six months. Um, so I guess like I've got about four months before I really have to tell them. I'm probably breaking the law or doing something wrong, but I, quite frankly, I don't care. Um, I'm hoping that I did ask him what happens um, when I have to go and see my new regular doctor, because my regular doctor's, um, uh, well, she's kind of semi-retiring. They've given me to somebody else who've only seen once. I said, what if she disagrees with you and makes me stop? And he said, she won't. He said, she's very, we're both very similar in our approach to things. She probably won't agree with it. He said, like, I'm a bit, mm. He said, but at the end of the day, this is your choice. And he put a note on the system as well. I'm hoping maybe if I change doctors, he'll maybe write to the GPs or maybe find out um, if there's anybody that he thinks um, would be more um, accepting of my approach to it. Um, apparently he's quite friendly with a lot of the doctors he trained with um, they've stayed in the area so hopefully one of his mates <laughs> will see me um, so anyway he said how did I want to proceed and I said can I show you a picture and this will probably ex say to, like how I, I'll proceed and I showed him the picture of the what, what I looked like this time last year and what I looked like now and how I feel and um um, and he just went you want to proceed and he said but I need to hear you say it and I, I said I'd like to carry on it he said with the alternative way or with love with Irox? and I said the alternative way and I said um, I just do I said I've just got to know I've just got to see I said I, you know I do feel better now than I did before he said right then he said we're going to do this properly then and he wants to know exactly how much of each thing I was on he said he found it interesting that my he said I was he said I was really worried when I saw your TSH level was 0.19 he said that did make me worry even reading the book he said it still made me worry he said I'm like I like to see now that it's I forget now what it is um I'll, I'll put it in the video um it's just scraping in in their range so it makes them happy um i told him about the t3 
didn't even blink. Um, I told him how much I was. He said, it, "What?" He said, "I'm just a bit concerned." He said, "If it's going to be fluctuating up and down, he said, that's me worry." He said, "Because it's quite different. Your bloods are quite different than when you had them done." And that, what was that? Was it around Christmas or something? It wasn't that far long there, was it? And I said, "Well, if that could be." I said, "I was taking uh, one and a half grains of NDT." I said, along with. Um, Oh, 75 micrograms of T3. I said, but well, I started feeling quite unwell. I said, like, like squeezing around my chest. And um, so I, what I thought, I said, I decided to um, reduce it. And he was like, and, and I was saying, well, I know. I said, but what can I do? I said, I know I'm not a doctor and I'm having to guess. I said, by the way, I'm feeling. I said, and um, so I reduced I said my T3 down to 50 milligrams. I also reduced my NDT to, down to um, one gram rather than one and a half. So he said, "Oh, that." He said, "When when was that in relation to bloods being taken?" And I said, "About three weeks before." And he said, "I said about three weeks, maybe four weeks." He said, "Yeah." He said that will then coincide with um, the change. He said that that's okay. I said that's fine. Then he said, "Just so I know, there's a reason for the change." Um, he said, how are you feeling on the reduced dose? And I said, generally I feel okay. I said, I feel fine. I said, but I'm back to feeling really cold again. And um, I said, I was thinking about upping the dose of the NDT again to one and a half, but keeping the T3 the same. And he said, really, he said, you, you need to not be going up and down and tweaking it so often. He said, and so quickly. He said, right, he said, plan of action. He said, you stay on the dose that you're on now. He said, I'll book you in for another blood test in four weeks' time. Um, we'll also do a blood cortisol test. And I know it's not a saliva one, but he, the, like he was saying, they just don't do it. And generally they don't. And even though I found that that hospital does, he said, that's most likely going to be really private. He said, even if it does say NHS, he said, but find me the details, drop them in. He said, we'll see what we can do. But in the meantime, we'll um, do a um, the blood cortisol test he said but then that throws in loads of issues with hydrocortisone if they were needed and he said which I already know like a lot of the dangers with hydrocortisone because my husband takes it but then he went into like the the um sort of bit of the history of that and what can happen and statistics about people breaking their hips and uh, so um not because of hydrocortisone but he, he kind of went off on a tangent a bit like me so um what else? So he's going to do that, and he said, "What?" He said, "What I really want to do is," he said, "I want to keep a really close eye on you." He said, "So we'll be testing your bloods every four months." He said, "But if you feel so much as a twinge, or dizzy, or just weird," he said, "You come in and we do your bloods again, and we see where you are, where you're at." And I was just like burst out crying again, and I said. And he was like, again? And I was like, I said, this is just a regular day for you. This is, I can say it's just a normal day for you. I said, this is not a regular day for me. It's not a regular day for people like me. I said, who, who have to fight and push and fight and end up on their own. And I was just like, you know, I said, I just can't even express. I was just like in tears. And I was like, thank you. Thank you so much. Said, thank you for listening to me. Thank you for helping me. And I said, I just, I said, I felt so desperate and alone. I said, I was terrified, sorry, terrified coming in today. And um, I needn't have been. I said, I underestimated you and I'm really sorry. And he was just like, he said, I just can't. He said, I don't understand why it's so unusual. He said, um, he said, and also, he said, it's not about just blood tests and results. He said, it's about listening to the patient. Patients listening to their own body, knowing how it's feeling, being able to express how they're feeling and taking that on board. Um, and I was just like, and I actually said to him, I said, I wish I was videoing this now. I wish I was videoing you talking like this. And he just kind of laughed. And I said, I know. I said, but I do. I said, because I just wish other people could see it and other doctors and you should definitely teach. And um, so we kind of wrapped it up there. And I was like, can I give you a hug? And he was like, no like that and I was like high five and he was like certainly not he said fist bump he said did you know statistically um and the, the um it, the, the percentage of how much it lowers the risk of 
contamination of germs or something like that and like I was just laughing he's just just do you know what right even if he had have disagreed with me and I was planning on saying to him you know I, I don't want to make a decision now but you know like I'd like to take away what you've told me and digest that and like make a decision then um but even if he'd have disagreed to me he's so fascinating anyway that I still wouldn't have disliked him Whereas that smiley endocrinologist who had me in tears last year, who said he won't see me again, he's just not a very nice man. He can smile all he likes, but he's not a very nice man. And he doesn't seem to actually care or be interested in his job. So even if this man is disagreeing with me, he seems to know like what he's talking about. And he wants to know more. He's got a thirst for knowledge. Um, all I can think of then was uh, Pulp. Um... Oh God, one of their songs anyway. So that's where I'm, not, I'm at now. So win for our team, guys. I'm just sorry that it isn't a win for everybody. But maybe the more we... I wouldn't even say convert, but the more we... Um, the more doctors we help open their mind. Does that make... That's not very good English, is it? Um, do you know what I mean? The more doctors that know a bit more about how we're feeling and what we feel like we need and you know get to more know more about alternative methods of treatment um you know maybe you know in a year not a year but you know in years from now it won't be so unusual and we won't have to fight you know god willing fingers crossed whatever you believe in let's hope that's the case um so that's it for now. I'm gonna I'm gonna go. So love to everybody. Stay strong. Bye.